Hello, this first podcast is uh, dedicated to the management of the longitudinal pigmentation of the neural unit, also known as Melanonychia striata. In this first part, we will speak about the general context of the disease and the clinical features. As shown in this large study about acral antigenous melanoma, it is very common that the diagnosis of uh, melanoma of the neural unit is delayed by many days, weeks, months or years in our patients. And in this work, we could demonstrate that our, all our patients had received at least one line of antifungal treatment for their pigmentation of the neural unit. But it, also, it is also known that in most cases, melanoma of the neural unit starts as a longi longitudinal neural pigmentation, also known as melanonychia striata. And this is not a new finding. Almost two centuries ago, the first description of melanonychia striata showed that the lesion starts 20 years earlier uh, in this patient as a black line, in ligne noire in French. It is of course very important to make an early diagnosis to reduce mortality and morbidity due to advanced melanoma, but it is also very important to propose an early diagnosis of this tumor uh, to avoid unnecessary surgery, to avoid amputation and to avoid disability. For that reason, it is very important to recognize and to make an appropriate diagnosis of melanonychia striata, but unfortunately, it is a syndrome with multiple causes. Longitudinal nail pigmentation, also known as melanonychia striata, may correspond to a melanocytic nevus, a benign lesion, but also to melanoma, a malignant neoplasm. But unfortunately, longitudinal pigmentation is also observed in ethnic type pigmentation, usually in skin type 5 and 6 patients. It usually involves many nails. It is also observed in subungual hemorrhages, it is observed in lentiginosis of the nail unit, like Logier-Utzika disease, but in that case, the pigmentation is often observed on other nails, and it is also observed on the mucous membranes. Drug-induced pigmentation is a very common disease. It is caused by many drugs, like uh, uh, anti-AIDS drugs, like anti-tuberculosis drugs and like cytostatic chemotherapies. Onychomycosis is not frequently pigmented, but it could be pigmented in some cases. Trauma-induced pigmentation is a very common disorder on the fifth toe, of course, but also on the first one when the second one is pushing on the nail plate. Bowen's disease can be pigmented in some rare cases, and onychomatricoma, which is a very rare nail neoplasm, a benign condition, is in some cases pigmented also. But if you want to know what is really going on to explain this nail pigmentation, you have to look at the nail matrix. And to look at the nail matrix, you need to perform a very aggressive surgery like this one, exposing the nail matrix after removal of the nail plate to look what is going on underneath and to take a biopsy. Taking such a biopsy can provide and give very ugly scars like this one, this one, or even this one when complete excision of the nail unit is necessary. For that reason, some clinicians have developed a clinical algorithm to make the difference between benign and malignant melanychia striata. 
In favor of a benign type are the following features. When the lesion is acquired during childhood, when it's present on multiple fingers or toes, we say it's polydactylic, when it's stable over time, when there is another good explanation for the pigmentation, for example, a drug intake or a knitting group that is often pigmented, and when there is no periungual involvement. On the other hand, the onset during adulthood, when the lesion is only on one finger or one toe, when it's changing over time, when there is some pigmentation of the periungual skin that is also known as Hutchinson sign, when the multiple colors are observed, when the lesion is triangular shaped, when there are some changes, especially erosion of the nail plate, all these signs are in favor of a malignant melanonic astriata. Childhood onset, like in this two days old boy, is benign. When it's polydactylic, or when, like in this patient, it's due to its is ethnic type, it's rather benign. On the other end, when the lesion has multiple colors, when there is some pigmentation of the periungual skin, also known as Hutchinson sign, and when there is when there are uh, changes of the nail plate like this erosion, it's in favor of a malignant melanic astriata. When it's changing over time, when the lesion is triangular shaped, then it's again in favor of a malignant melanic astriata. I come to my conclusion for this podcast. Early recognition of the nail unit melanoma permits to offer a treatment with higher chances of success. It also permits to reduce the disability due to surgery when a conservative treatment is possible. In most cases, melanoma of the nail unit begins as a longitudinal nail pigmentation along the nail plate, also known as melanonychia striata. However, melanonic astriata is a syndrome with multiple causes, included, of course, melanoma, but also benign conditions. Knowing the commonest clinical features of a malignant melanonic astriata permits to better select the cases that must be submitted to a biopsy. And in the next podcast dedicated to nail pigmentation, we will see how dermoscopy offers additional information to improve the management of these difficult cases. So this is to be continued. I thank my co-workers and I thank you all for listening. Goodbye.